Welcome to Monday 3 again. Uh, this time I am commentating for Crazy Tone Sock, who will be running the Simpsons Hit and Run. We have socks on his hands. Uh, a size 11 and a half, uh, US size shoe. White socks, I believe. No, these socks are small. <laughs> are you are you ready to go, Mr. Mr. Tone Dog? I am ready to go. Okay, so, so we we will go in three, two, one, go. And now we get a nice little uh nice little cutscene to watch, you know. Show us for a huge shout out to the hand cam. That looks awesome. Thank you. I just had a second webcam seeing out, and I plugged in, and it worked. Yeah, so the base premise of this game is there are seven levels, uh, four different, no, five different playable characters. Over those seven levels, you get you get to see Homer twice and Bart twice, uh, and of course you get to play as Lisa. Maggie and randomly a poo. Unfortunately, you don't get a grandpa level, which I think is sorely missing from the game. Uh, the, the first level is quite simple in its design. Nothing crazy has quite happened yet. As we just saw, uh, Rusty is advertising new Buzz Cola, and that becomes more, impor more important uh, as the game goes on, lore-wise. Initially, you're just told that you forgot something on the way home, so Marge wants you to get the ice cream from the Cookie Mart. You know, as as you do. I think we've all gone home and forgotten something, and then uh, our partners or parents or whatever are just like, nope, you got to go out again. And now, and now you're driving to the uh, the school because Lisa has forgot a science project, which. I don't ever believe would happen in uh, in the show. Lisa would not forget a uh, science project. So there's a, there's a few plot holes in this, but you know, you, you take what you can get. Uh, Ondal getting hit by traffic a little bit there, so a lot of this game is manipulating traffic. You can do uh, camera flickbacks quite often. Uh, to despawn traffic. I'm not sure how easy it is whilst wearing socks, but uh, Tone Dog is getting school roof, which isn't something we usually get in the ASM route, but because of the uh, added constrictions, uh, it's easier to just get some safe points, and these are very safe. We have a couple of run runners who uh, are still top 50 who go for uh, school roof. It's they're slow coins for rest safe coins, and they set up a rest of a run quite nicely because coins you have to buy purchasables, so uh, costumes and cars to a run. In total, you need 3650 coins. So, hopefully, you can, uh, we'll, hopefully, we'll get those. And now we're about to collect the uh, lost items, you know? Because we've borrowed a lot of things from Flanders over the years, and now we're going to try and get them back. And give them back to them. So first off, we need to get his tuxedo, which we left by a big tombstone. Uh, no idea why. Then we have a lawnmower. Uh, Probably one of the favorite ones for people to miss is either the lawnmower or the garden chair. Uh, apparently, Barney just keeps a, a cooler on him at all times. Who knows why, but it is what it is. Interesting fact about Crazy Tone Dog. Apparently, 89% of his uh, socks are white, as you can see right now. So when uh, deciding what sock he was going to wear today, he decided, you know, to just to go with the old reliable. 
the white sock. The classics are often the best. Oh, for sure, for sure. What socks have you got on Axe? Uh, I have striped purple socks today. Wow, that's pretty fancy. I like it. Yeah. There are two different shades of purple. One's dark purple and one's light, and we just stripe down. I know Tone Dog uh, did a run of this uh, a couple of weeks ago. He got a 139, I believe. So he's he's in good form. He is one of our top runners in this game. Uh, the ideal time, without socks on, obviously, is uh, a sub 130 time, and then you make like the elite level. And Tone Dog's made it. Uh, Maybe What's one the day. World record. The world record uh, is a one ninety in fifty four, I think. Without, obviously, without socks on. Uh, I think only <laughs> Tone Dog is mad enough to do it with socks on. But oh yeah, there is the world record holder is just insane in this game. It's always the way. There's always that one person who's. Who's so good at the game? The, uh, in a game I run called Outlast, we have a we have one guy who's just miles past everyone else. It's crazy. Two guys. It's it's always wild to see. Yeah, for uh, for our game, we have one who's definitely uh, above everyone else, and we have a second place who is like above anybody else, but but like in that in between gap between first and third, and then like. We have like third down to like 20th, they're all very competitive. Uh, yes, the world record is uh, Liquid Wi-Fi, but Own Dog is definitely one of the coolest runners. He's the only one who runs with a bandana on always, so, you know. I mean, that's worth, that's worth two minutes right there. I have argued that, but you know, he doesn't wear his purple bandana enough. Quite disappointing. Yeah, and I'm sure we can persuade speedrun.com to knock three minutes off for the purple bandana. Yeah, unfortunately he missed the main strat there, so he went forward to push uh, Smithers against the wall into the uh, garage of the house and missed it, but then got a very decent backup. It's crashing time! Like it does look like socks are quite awkward for the fine motor movement that you need in uh, as a mission to this game. Uh, there's some platforming sections in this game. I remember casually being <laughs> a little rough, so I can't imagine how the socks feel. Uh, uh, it will feel pretty rough, I think. Uh, and One Dog is on uh, 46 FPS, so he's one of the lowest FPS runners on PC, and that. So like boosts you can get off ramps and uh, jumps uh, will be lower than on higher FPS. So the small little things like that uh, are going to be impacted even more using the socks just because uh, your timings will be a bit off. And therefore, if you're already getting like smaller jumps, you're going to get even... It's going to be a tougher window to get. And now we got a cutscene where we see... Uh, Mayor Quim and Mayor Quimby and Kent Brockman. And you get to oh, see me drink of water with their socks on. Incredible. Oh, that's bonus content here live. I love it. You gotta drink that water. Stay hydrated. For sure. Especially when you're playing Simpsons Syndrome with the socks on. Fuck water. But, uh, oh, chat, is is his name Crazy Tone Sock or Crazy Sock Dog? We, we did have a, a discussion a couple of days ago. Let's do this then. Oh, 
Yeah, we have a fairly simple mission. Uh, Phone Dog will just be driving following uh, Black Band because uh, strange Black Bands are spying on people. And uh, this mod says, uh, Oh, homie, you're so sexy when you're paranoid. I do think my favorite language for this game is French. Some of the voice lines in French is wild. Getting a bit caught up there on the Gamden wheel. Uh, a bit, a bit unfortunate. Oh, we have a we have a poll going in chat. Let's go. Can you come and get me? I'll pay you in back row. Sock, sock, sock is uh, second place. Oh, Interesting choice. Uh, crazy tone socks really straight down the lead. I like it. Got a good uh, ring to it. For sure. I'm actually a fan of crazy sock dog. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw that spanner in the works. Yeah, this game is has a good like nostalgia hit for a lot of people. It's a 2003 game uh, that I know a lot of people did enjoy. It was on the PS2, the GameCube, and the Xbox. And then there was a PC port uh, as well. There is an official PC version of this game. Uh, if anybody wants to join the community, we are, are quite we are quite big. We've just finished our annual uh, All Story missions tournament. And the community just keeps on growing. Um, just go on to speedrun.com, search Simpsons Hit and Run, then there's a link to the Discord there. And our community is always really helpful to new runners. We have like guides to where to begin, uh, tutorials, and people like Tone Dog who's willing to help. We will be seeing the section with uh, Bart pretty quickly. So uh, for a time comparison, uh, usually you, Tone Dog would be leaving Homer 1 at like about the I-11 mark uh, on 46 FPS. It was only like a minute to a minute and a half behind his average, I'd say. So considering he's wearing socks and a few things have been difficult. It's uh, it's pretty pretty nice how he's going so far. How does the uh, all story missions compare to like any percent? Like, what's the big differences? So, all story missions is the main category because any percent you if you res uh, if you restart missions six times and then fail it on the seventh. Uh, one, you can then skip for mission. So the any percent world record is like 30-ish minutes faster, but the level of gameplay is down quite a lot because I believe you skip about 38 or so missions uh, out of the 49 story missions plus the tutorial mission. So out of 50, you skip about 38-ish. There are the tutorial mission you can't skip, the last three missions you can't skip, and then some others are just faster to complete. Uh, oh, there are one or two missions in any percent that we skip because of the amount of coins you can collect uh, compared to the time. So, all story missions you just have to complete everything in the game. It's quite rare that the uh, any that any percent of a game isn't the main category, uh, but for us it just it just makes more sense to have more gameplay.
Shout out to Otto. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Ah, but did you know that socks first came into existence in the 8th century BC? And most of the time they were made out of like animal skins and furs uh, back then and have been used uh, pretty much ever since then. Uh, the Romans would wrap their feet in animal skins and tie it around their ankles. The concept of a sock has been there for a long time. Your level of sock knowledge is one we should all attain at some point in our lives. <laughs> I I did a bit of uh, research on socks uh, before. Although there is a, a sock etiquette that I, during my research, I find that there is actually a sock etiquette. And by wearing purple socks today, I am breaking sock, sock etiquette because uh, the sock color should match the color of the shoes and or trousers. Uh, it should be a little darker than the trousers and a little lighter than the shoes. So, you know, for any anybody who wants to go to some great events, uh, just make sure your socks are matching. I feel we've all just been shook to our core because now we all have to change the way we live in our wild lives to get in with the sock <laughs> etiquette. I'm currently I, Googling f fanatically to get correct coloured shoes and socks and, and trousers. <laughs> An interesting statistic I found uh, was that 82% of young men wear odd socks at least once a week. It's one I don't have trouble believing. I think that one's uh, <laughs> going from my own experiences. And uh, lost socks can cost you up to £240 a year. Uh, the average four-person family will do 60 socks a year. So, you know. we got to look after our socks. Is Tone dog gear, tone dog socks. Right? Usually when people have white socks, well, the hardest thing is to keep them clean. But look, Tone dog is a majestic part of a man. Are these... Are these... The new socks, turned over are these uh, are these older socks that you've just cleaned really well. You know, no shame here. Um, I think I just found them in my drawer. I didn't clean them. It's probably been like years because these are small. <laughs> They're like in the drawer that like I don't wear anything in, like small stuff. But all my socks are pretty clean. Like all because I have like. 89% white socks, as you heard earlier. Like, I pretty much only wear white socks. Like, you will It's rare you find me not wearing white socks. Probably an imposter. Or I'm just trying to be fancy. So, oh, not wearing white, white socks is about as rare as you uh, not wearing your bandana. Yeah, I don't wear... Uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. My banana, my bandana is not on all the time. My banana. Let's go. <laughs> like, I don't sleep. I, I used to sleep with my bandana on and just cover over my eyes, but I did that like twice. It was fun. Anyways, here's a cool jump. There we go. Over the highway. Whee! And. Oh, that was perfect. Good momentum, you got a little boost after the jump. That was a hundred percent perfect. Interestingly, that jump was found in our All Story Missions tournament last year by a runner uh, who 
historically played the game, then left, then came back uh, for a bit, and basically did some route decisions that were quite confusing. But it just went to sh it just goes to show that like even if you are like lower down in the leaderboard, sometimes you can just do something and it just gets routed in. Uh, it saved like five seconds or so uh, compared to what we previously did. Oh, it's kind of wild. Uh, last year's tournament had like three or four different tricks that come out of the people who were like the bottom seeds going into a tournament. So this game is really cool to see because half the time the tricks that we find are by people who aren't following the speedrun like guides and just do whatever and somehow find ways to make it faster. Uh, Tone Dog, you'll be happy to know Crazy Tone Sock is your real name now. Let's go, Crazy Tone Sock. Put on a, put on a shirt, sell out. it. <laughs> Should I sell the socks I'm wearing after the stream? Sign them? Or give them away? Who wants Crazy Tone Sock socks used in this room? Let me know. <laughs> I, I think uh, Corey might uh, like to have a collection of socks. From what I heard, uh, Corey is a sock uh, connoisseur. So. so I might have to sign them. Send them over. <laughs> So here we're going to do a main menu warp, so quitting to the main menu. And what this does is it resets the wasp and allows the wasp to have collision while in the car for the first two. And that's basically the gist of it. So I can hit the wasp while I'm in the car and get the 25 points. Yeah, wasp physics are kind of weird. You have um, the first two have collision. If you miss one, then you have to cycle things around. And later on, you'll see Tone Dog spawning Saturn. Wasps be to allow other wasps to have collision. Uh, there are some exceptions to a rule, but I'm not gonna go into them too much because wasp physics in this game are one of the most confusing things. I think you need like a physics degree to be able to understand wasps in this game. But not a hundred percent sure. Uh, yes, we did have uh, somebody who is studying, a I think, doing a physics degree right now, who has figured out that uh, wasps are on a cycle. So, it turns out that uh, the wasps are on a global cycle based on your computer. Uh, and there is now a program which you can have, which is like a... A red dot, basically, which goes round and uh, it shows you where the wasp will be on their cycle. I think bottom left is like the best way to put, to hit them in your car. Or it's like if the wasp is too high, uh, you won't be able to hit it. We're coming on to one of the uh, hardest missions uh, of the early game. In a minute, we uh, hello. It's uh, very, very difficult, especially with socks. Uh, calling family sedan is not is not the strat, by the way. Oops, I, <laughs> I forgot it was one to the right, not one to the left. But I'm pretty sure chat loves family sedan. It's one of the most beloved cars in the video game. 
reference as the funny pink car. It is funny, and it is pink. It's a car. It is a car too. Oh, you really want to get the first car done uh, by the end of a tunnel, which Bonesoft got, and you know, pretty solid so far. That was a bad second hit there. Uh, and obviously all many race days for uh, a very, very good course. So. For every uh, every cutscene that Tone Dog misses, I will donate five dollars. Oh, so there's, there's that, uh, a bit of consolation if Tone Dog misses a cutscene. We are coming up to the first skippable cutscene in a moment. At the end of this mission. That bus is very unfortunate. It loses uh, 50 coins, but Tone Dog is uh, on insane coin pace, and he does get a cutscene. Let's go. I need to find... Let's just do this thing. That is both a let's go and uh, unfortunate. One pause. A one pause. On 46 FPS, you should be getting it. Oh, True. Time. Lower the frames, the more time you have to get it. This is funny. That arm can always be a good time. Yeah, you never know if you're gonna get crushed by the arm or not. Uh, I wonder if the arm would be softer if it had a sock. How big of a sock would it need to be to be able to, like, you know, lessen the blow? Yeah, what size shoe would fit on that? We're talking about U.S. size on the entire arm. Hmm. Just the foot part, maybe like f size 46. You do like a good uh, 46. I really do like a good 46. Favorite number in the world currently. Direct hit. You may be asking yourself, what is the main function of a sock and why do we wear socks? Well, I have the answer to that. The main function of socks is to wick away the moisture from your feet, which can produce an astounding half a litre a day. They also protect your feet from getting blisters from rubbing and chafing and help keep bacteria from forming, which make your feet smell. Oh, socks are pretty good. I'm not sure if socks on your hands are... Uh, are any good, uh, no. Can I hop in with the real reason we have socks? Uh, sure, go for it. 
it's to be worn with sandals, and there is no other reason for them. To protect uh, our feet from the horrible feet, the, the horrible feeling of sandals. That's, that's the only reason. I, I, I disagree. I think all people wearing sandals should be uh, taken away from my vicinity. But you know, that's neither here nor there. And socks and sandals. Uh, Tone Dog missing boat jump. Although, from what I've seen, socks and sandals are very common in Germany. I don't know why, but like, I've been to Ger I used to live in Germany. And like, the amount of people who wear socks and sandals, it's astounding. A very stylish country. I don't think sock etiquette would allow you to wear socks and sandals. Oh, is he gonna get a strat? Oh, he messed it up. Although this is a backup, he's getting the backup. Although he's backing up a bit too much, uh, he needs to chuck it into the corner. Oh, and he boxed him really nice. So he gave the cleat, gave cleat a three old one two. How do you do? I really wish I'd figured this out as a kid. It would have saved me so much stress and hassle. Yeah, it's quite interesting, like how things like that, when you watch it nowadays, it's like, oh, ob obviously, that's how you're meant to do it. But as a kid, it's like, wait a second, what, what am I meant to do? You just go by what the road signs say. Like, there's so many shortcuts and stuff in this game that, like, people don't figure out just because, like, the road markings tell you to go a different way. Now we're buying a very cool outfit for Lisa. Required for not this mission, but the next mission. Ooh. And the requirement for this mission is to get the school bus, which we'll be going to Otto to get. And also by Otto, there's a box and a wasp, which is pretty good coins. It's just right there. You just hop over the rocks, as you will see soon. I'm going to do it with the school bus, because doing it with this traffic car Kinda sucks. Here's Otto again. We do like Otto. Otto is very likable. It's like a uh, crazy tone sock. He's, he's also very likable. Great man. And then we restart the mission. After we get the coins, it'll automatically just all go to us. That is a cool feature of a game, like if you hit a box or a vent or something and you warp or something to the same level, you keep the coins. But if you warp to a different level and the coins haven't hit you yet, uh, you will lose those coins. Which can be quite unfortunate, but we usually don't see that in this category. Uh, any percent, you have a couple of situations where it might happen. But in this category, uh, you tend to not, like, what those coins are coming towards you. Like, to a different level. There's not usually that many situations where you need to do a different uh, level like that. On to the second car now. Uh, is it gonna... Ooh, that wasn't perfect, but Home Dog dealt with that perfectly. Woo! That was very. I did not expect it to keep it like that, but let's go. It didn't turn. Uh, I getting to you, but it worked. I forgot how the route goes. Here, I'm gonna do the cool. Uh, I'm gonna do the cool way. Wait for it. I messed it up. Oh well. I mean, that's our way. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if it's. I'm not sure if it's the cool way, but it's a way. Nah, I. I was not prepared for this. The only good news is I'm not gonna have to warp because the mission is right here. But that's the only good news. And if I can stop the vehicle, that'd be good too. And know what direction I'm running. Camera in this game can be very silly. 
Let's drink some water. Everyone should stay hydrated. lines of this game is very very weird <laughs> running over for an elderly, elderly lady without a license I, I wouldn't have thought of that to the fact that there was no license would have mattered Now we're on to the uh, fish collecting mission. So, uh, Moon, if you have any donations or anything you want to say about the charity, uh, now is a good opportunity. So we don't have any uh, donations in a minute. So guys, if you want to chuck in a couple of pennies towards a wonderful cause, uh, would be much appreciated. We're raising money for Able Gamers at the moment. And Able Gamers uh, is supporting people uh, with disabilities uh, are at a heightened risk of social isolation. However, Able Gamers knows that video games can be a perfect getaway to community participation, lifelong friendships, and unforgettable shared experiences. That is why it's crucial to ensure these experiences are developed with accessibility as a priority and inclusion as the goal. For over a decade and a half, Able Gamers has been pushing the inclusive, uh, inclusive efforts of the industry forward by training and consulting studios while connecting them directly with players who can share their personal experiences. So this, the Able Gamers Foundation really does help in all departments, not only from supplying custom controllers to consulting with studios, game development, um, they really do uh, a huge wide range of things that allows people who can't use the more traditional standard platforms um, to get, get in and join us in our communities that we all love and we all cherish. Like, we all are part of lots of different communities as gamers and it's amazing to see FTLG uh, supporting such a wonderful cause. So guys, if you want to chuck in a few pennies, it would mean the world to us and we really, uh, really appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, that I, in my personal life, I work uh, as a carer for people with learning disabilities and autism and stuff. And them, video games can be a very good way to be able to uh, get stimulus out and just to have a bit of fun and uh, not have to worry about like the issues per se. They can just play video games and just get stuck in. And I think we all in some parts of our life use video games as an escape so it's really cool to see a charity like this called like able gamers uh helping them helping people who might necessarily not be able to do it otherwise uh join us in our communities you know pretty good yeah the more i read about uh, able gamers and what they do and what i've seen as well um in the run-up to this uh, event I, I watched a quick video on some of their their uh, different achievements and it's it's truly incredible what the, what they've done um and some other some other custom controllers they've come up with for people are are really really insane like they're they're, they're really cool and like very very well thought out and stuff so amazing course guys and a wonderful wonderful reason we're all here today so appreciate everyone being here even just helping even just hanging out helps out the stream and everything so appreciate you all and thank you to uh crazy tone dog for doing a run as well and axe for commentating everybody you know taking part it's always uh, a lot of fun definitely for sure that might have been the goofiest thing i've ever done in that mission the way i, I just to say, <laughs> that limo was was spectacular <laughs> Not sure if it's spectacularly good or not, but it was spectacular nonetheless. That was wonderful. 
sir. Could you give me a lift? It was an accident. <laughs> Shouldn't enjoy that. No time for caution. So guys, what what would you say is the hardest part of this run? Because for me, casually, when I played the game, it's been many years since I played the game, I'm pretty honest, apart from when me and my housemate tried to complete it in one night for fun while, while we were drunk one day. Um, <laughs> um, I always found the car handling to be incredibly crazy in this game. So uh, well, what's the sort of hardest part of this game from a run perspective? Well, for me personally, it's this mission right here. I This is my <laughs> least favorite mission in the game, Donut Truck. And like this is a, the perfect example. I'm just doing the the more safe strat of the mission, and then this garbage truck just wants to slam into me and absolutely ruin it. And now I got hit run since I'm sliding against this traffic car that's not supposed to be here, and now I'm busted and lost 50 coins. But in general, the hardest part of this game is just when you're first starting off is just memorizing everything. Like where to reset, how to escape everything, and then the further you get in, it's getting the strats, just the strats decently going. Like at least you're getting them sometimes, and then, and then it gets pretty optimized where my PB is. Like once you get sub 130, it's really about like making sure you do every movement correctly, but. Just overall completing the game, it's just remembering what to do. And where to how to escape cars and how to get most destruction. Sure, I think it's quite interesting because when you're first finding the game, it's all about like car movement, driving lines and stuff and just uh, keeping yourself on the road and making sure that you can uh, complete missions in time and everything. And then it gets to the point that where you're actually learning coin rides and strats and stuff. And then it goes back to driving lines again. So when you get really good, it goes back to like optimizing your driving lines because there are, if you're not taking the straightest path possible, you're losing like a couple of seconds per mission just on like not cutting the corners cleanly and not driving correctly. Like and it's quite interesting how the curve of like what you need to learn uh, goes back and around in a circle. It's just like driving lines into strats into driving lines and you get to come to a point where you know all the strats and all the strats and you have a consistent like coin route and you don't need to necessarily practice that but then it comes back to can you drive properly are you losing a few seconds picking up like like that then for example right there tone dog lost like a second or two uh just because of that um because of poor maneuvering and this game has rubber banding so if you're in a follow mission and a uh, car is like too far ahead of you it will slow down a little and um, in the earlier levels it will slow down a lot and the further and further you get in the game it will uh, be rubber banding decreases but it's still there slightly um personally for me i think hardest part of the game is has always been a rater or death truck for me like one or two of the strats are always quite difficult uh i look back to my pb and and that uh, i have like minutes based on those two sticks alone so yeah you pretty much just gotta learn to drive and then when you get really good at the game you gotta learn to drive again Uh, length of a speed run is very very nice it's like a after a, it's like a two hour two and a half hour on your first run and then you get down to like an hour and a half an hour 40. i think that's almost like a perfect length of speed game for me it's like 90 minutes to two hours perfect time you don't lose too much concentration And the game definitely has some of the like most intricate uh, things on the last couple of missions. So you do have 
last couple of levels, so you do have to focus. And also despawn in traffic. Tone Dog isn't really despawn in traffic today because he's wearing socks on his hand. So he can't really do that much. But if you uh, flick your camera back, we'll change the traffic patterns ahead of you and I'll basically just get them out of your way. But yeah, in general, it's not the hardest speed game to learn. It's actually quite easy to get into and quite addictive. And you can definitely see even from like first runs uh, where your time save is and it's... It is like almost a rush trying to push your time down as much as possible. I do like how the uh, charity for this uh, marathon is almost perfectly chosen. It's like every run of this marathon you have some sort of handicap and some sort of like limitation. And it's quite interesting to see like how the runners are adapting to that kind of thing. Like some people can't, don't have their like visual sight for certain runs. Some people don't have like their, their range of touch like Tone Dog right now with socks and stuff. So it's really good that it's linking quite nicely to a charity. Uh, we can see these top level speedrunners like struggle when they have some sort of impairment, so it's good to, to highlight that kind of thing. And we are on the 46th minute of a run, uh, uh, which is Tone Dog's favorite number. Having three kids really slows you down. What is it about 46, Tone Dog, that you just like so much? Good number. Um, it's because I was testing FPS in this game, and 46 is just, at least how I feel, it helps with the park going from 7.4 to 7.5, because I feel like if you're lower than 46, there's a higher chance that your car just gets pushed away, which loses like 40 seconds, but like oh, a minute if you're like committed to attempting to do the park. And 46 is a good balance in between that. It's possible on lower, but it feels like you're on a time limit. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But 46 is just perfect. Fun fact, I used to play on 36 for quite some time before... I got tired of missing the park over and over again in Homer 2, which we will hopefully be seeing. I do expect to be doing all the out of bounds. Well, all the main out of bounds. Do you practice the uh, main out of bounds on with socks? Mm hmm. Sometimes I got my controls mixed up, but I got there eventually. Because my controls are different, obviously, because I'm playing with socks on. Like, I don't have ac good access to either of the bumpers or triggers, so... With the way I'm playing with the controller. How hard would it be to, like, adjust to uh, wearing socks uh, or run? Not super difficult. But it was a little difficult because I had to switch around like respawn car, my e-brake, which e-brake might be one of the most important controls. So that's like the thing that's throwing me, that threw me off while practicing, is that my e-brake is down on d-pad. When it's normally on the other side of the controller. Everything else is, I'm pretty sure the same. And then, of course, flicking the camera back being, um not comfortable like, like I can do it with my thumb like I, actually it's not that bad 
but hopefully I don't fail here. And there's the third bust of the run. Oh, you were so close to... you were actually dodging that for so long as well. Yeah, you? unfortunate. Which now means you probably have to get Flanders uh, coins. Which is absolutely okay. For sure, yeah. Uh, do you think you're still on pace for a suck world record? Um, according to splits, I'm 20 seconds behind, but I do know my homer too. Does have Ooh. missed park. We could have a sock percent world record live on Nisathon. Possibly. Stay tuned. We're about halfway through the run. Maybe, yeah, just about halfway, maybe. Maybe a little less. And now we're on to... Another cutscene, because for some reason this game likes cutscenes. There's uh, seven cutscenes in total, and two of them are unskippable, four of them are skippable. Well, five of them are skippable, the intro cutscene as well, and then part one, uh, part one, part two, Apu, and the final cutscene. Maybe these are jug bots memory. Tell me about the crap circles. We've got a minute, guys. I'll just run through the schedule uh, that we've got coming up today. Oh, yeah. So guys, just wanted to highlight some runs that are coming up today that we've got for this fantastic uh, event. Uh, next, we've got the wonderful Nico Hart winning, running one of my main speed games, uh, Resident Evil 7, but he's doing it on a steering wheel. He's actually running my main category as well, which is all, always awesome to see, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing Nico Hart run that on a steering wheel. Uh, then after that, we've got uh, Danisan GB. Uh, or Danny Sang, uh, running Dark Souls 3 one-handed, which is also going to be an interesting, uh, an interesting run. I'm looking forward to seeing both of those. Uh, got a lot of, a lot of really cool runs today. Uh, and then we got another RE7 run, the DLC with Glove Percent, um, which, uh, is great. I know Valveda is a, a fantastic run of RE7. Uh, as I said, I'm pretty, pretty, uh, know a lot of the guys from the RE7 community, and, uh, Valveda's a wonderful runner, so... Really looking forward to it. Uh, we got Control coming up later on, as well as Resident Evil 2 by Master D. Uh, and then we've got a very, very uh, difficult run. I know because I've tried it. It's Resident Evil 7 Guest House Blindfolded. Now, that is a huge chunk of the game, guys. Like, casually, without blindfold, it's like 15 minutes. So, to see Yiddle running that blindfolded is going to be amazing. And that's happening later on today. Um, so yeah, some wonderful stuff coming up today, guys. Make sure you stay tuned. So we, uh, have some fun on the run. With all these, all these crazy runs. Yeah, we also have, uh, Piku Niku, which is actually my other speed game. Uh, one that's quite near and dear to my heart. Uh, run by Aiden on, uh, the steering wheel coming up. In the middle of all the Resident Evil and Dark Souls games. You have a nice, cute little... The platformer style game. Don't worry, if you're if you're one evil games, it it you do destroy capitalism. So I think I think it still fits. <laughs> do a bit of capitalism destruction. Although personally, I think the run I'm most looking forward to is the uh, run tomorrow morning at like 5 a.m. for me. It's uh, it takes two solo co-op any percent. I think. It Takes Two is an amazing speedrun, if, if uh, you guys haven't seen it yet, uh, definitely watch, look out for that one, it's kind of insane how good good noise is. I've actually been avoiding it because I want to play it with my partner, so and I, I don't know if I'll be up and watching it because it's 4am for me, so... <laughs> but uh, I've, I've, I saw a little bit of it at uh, GDQ, I think, and it looked it looked really good. Or maybe an ESA, I can't remember. It's an amazing uh, speedrun. Um, he's doing the any percent one-handed, oh no, one-handed, sorry, uh, co-op any percent. So he's doing his keyboard and controller, and the way he's got a setup is pretty, pretty wild.
Yeah, this mission was quite a simple one. You collect cans, you run around, and yeah, then you go and speak to Apu because Marge is finally realizing that cola is bad for the uh, country because it is some sort of mind control. Now she's trying to destroy the cola trucks. Ooh, Tone Dog is going for an old school strat here. Doesn't quite get it, but that is a very safe but very old school. The uh, one thing which is underrated. You gotta is, uh... be kidding me! <laughs> Forty-six FPS sign just went right through it. I was about to get that this color truck the one shot. Then nope, it just goes through the school sign. Gotta love yeah, that forty-six that FPS. Happens on low FPS. It just go. It doesn't uh, think that some things exist. So yeah, which we'll be seeing in Homer Two, the last level. I honestly think okay. that like the ooh, the one thing which is underrated about this game is like the the soundtrack. The soundtrack is a banger. Absolutely agree. Oh my goodness. Uh, this Coda trucks, however, is uh, not what people would call a banger. This is not a banger. It's pretty bad, but. Pretty safe hit against this wall coming up. You just follow slowly, and it didn't go straight, so it didn't get into one hit. But half damage is pretty good, and it's just gonna get stuck here. Yeah, those first two color trucks are not good. Uh, every color truck seems to be bad. Oh well. Wait. That's some good damage, I'll take that. That was very good damage. This part of the song is pretty cool. It just switches up for the last cola truck, the last one you have to destroy. We're fine. That was a little scary. Now we're on to the Apu level, which is quite a nice little thing. Never have I seen such a four-wheel disgrace. Three hundred horses. Well, this is arguably one of the hardest uh, levels of a game. Just between me and you, random object. Get out of the way.
But, uh, did you know the first knitting machines were for socks? They were invented in, uh, knit knitting machines were invented in 1589 by Englishman William Lee. He did so to cut down on the time it took to knit socks by hand. His machine could knit at eight times the rate of hand knitting, like, oh. But down. Uh, the estimate of this run is 106 minutes because it is 1 hour 46. I didn't realise how close uh, we were to the estimate, actually. For some reason, I thought the estimate was a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> no, the... Old Dog did a run in, I think, 99 minutes the other day. And then, of course, you've got to take into account uh, RTA. Oh, I yeah. 100% uh, category of this game is a lot longer. That with socks would be a, a, a huge, huge challenge. A hundred percent. It'd be over four hours long. Most people. What in the hell were you thinking? So with a hundred percent, what's the criteria? Is it outfits, missions, cars, like collectibles? Oh, the... I'm guessing. Yeah, in this scrapbook there is a uh, uh, counter, so it's all missions, all bonus missions, all street races, all collect, all like um, wasps, bags, and collector cards, and uh, all costumes and purchasable vehicles. There is also a category called low percent, where you Pretty much only, you don't get any wasps, any gags. The only way you can get coins is by boxes and vents. Uh, if you get like a wasp, you run over. If you do a mission, you run over. Apart from the final three missions, because you have to uh, do those to complete the game. And that's 5.2% of the game. Mr. Me and Tondok have actually been running this game about the same amount of time. I think we both started within a month of each other. Uh, it was like summertime in 2020. Yep. But we both recorded our first runs. I believe mine was June 21st, 2020. It was my first run. And it was a 2 hours, 43 minutes, and 59 seconds in game time. Of all story missions, the category I'm running now. I think mine was like the 27th of May or something last year. But I sense it. I, uh, you are definitely committed to the game than me. I, I do prefer talking about the game more probably. So we have a community channel where all of our races and tournaments are held, uh, and I am one of the two most common commentators there, so I've talked about this game probably one of the most uh, that anybody has. Definitely. You're always commentating. I commentate a lot too. Not as I much like as talking, you. I, think. <laughs> I just like talking. You know. uh, this is a certified car built for Homer moment. Yep, this is Simpsons Hit Run. That is Fidus. <laughs> yeah, so if you jump on a car, normally you can um, just walk in. 
Whereas there are some parts of the Kaaba Mahoma where if you climb on, it doesn't register as you being on top of a car, but you'll like moonwalk off the car and then walk in. It looks super cool. I mean, that just looks silly. Also, loses like five seconds every time it happens. Yeah, but looks silly. True, true. You also get mad at the video game. I missed the box though, that's so unfortunate. That is fabulous. I didn't have time. That's so unfortunate I didn't get the box. That's the purpose of going up there, is to get that box early. I don't think anyone does it ever, except for me, because you know, I'm just I'm just cool like that. I'm like the only because it's possible to get both of the wasp at the Sin Rotate, which is that purple tower in the middle of that. But I just kind of like shooting up there and getting that box early because it's cool. So I don't have to get it during this next mission, never trust a snake. It's like one of the only few things I do that no one else does. Also something about this mission is the garbage truck sometimes around this location can miss a trigger and then it will just start driving backwards and possibly in circles and it will never figure out a solution and will just be stuck there driving in circles forever. Unless you possibly push it super far back, which is a possibility, but that is just something that is basically uncontrollable I believe. I believe it happens way more often if you push the garbage truck and you don't let it drive. But when that happens, yeah. it's frustrating. It's happened to me once in recent times. I think, I think for me, ooh, i do a little fall there. I accidentally pressed the jump because of the sock. Ah, oh, now we see where sock comes to play. Is that, is that just a speedrunner excuse, guys? I, I think it's just mixed. That also happened after I reset during, um, what was it, Clueless, after the boat. I accidentally pressed the Y and got out of my car. Also, hello wasp. What are you doing here? This is slow, but I want it now. See, if I were to hit the box when I did that, I would not have to ground pound here and grab it. But unfortunately, I didn't have time. I might have failed the mission, which would have lost a lot of time. The coins do look a little uh, sketchy at this point, though. Yep, I'm gonna grab the watch, the wasp on the other side of the building right here, and I just I'm gonna hope that I get the strat for a quick cash to get the two wasp I still have at Sin Rotate. That's the plan. Hopefully, the plan. Oh no. That wasp did not want to be kicked. It just flew off the building. The plan did not go to plan. Nope. Now who knows where that wasp is. Also, 
Also, something else about wasps. Wasps just have the ability to go behind walls at a random chance. I think this was found in the source code, which at recently um, got leaked for this game, Simpsons and Run. I don't know much about it, to be honest. Oh yeah, there was a few things which came out uh, from the source code leak. Uh, where are you going? Yeah, I, I I was thinking it was the, the previous mission, this little piggy, where you follow Wiggum. And that's not the path you do, you just drive straight, and then you go here, and you respawn your car. There's uh, a new bounty out again, uh, for anybody who successfully finds a coin glitch, which, uh, which works. Um, the community did rally around for a little bit to try and uh, find it, but nothing solid was found. Uh, there were so many, like, almost leads, but aren't really practical. And also, you got brick skip, let's go. If you get quick hash, your coins might be salvageable, but if you don't, then uh, uh -oh. it could be a big uh-oh moment. I might have to um, coin grind. Possibly. I do like a good uh, coin grind. True. Well, here comes a very crucial part of the run, the armor truck strat. I could go for a 46 FPS strat. I don't feel like it, cause... No. That looks like a deli truck. Oh, not a deli truck. But basically, this is really bad, uh, because the armor truck won't reverse into the stairs and just crash. So normally we want to push it so it's stuck under the stairs, almost. Like, you see where that pillar is? We like uh, to smack the armor truck off that. That's gonna get out. It is blunt. Oh wait, 46 FPS is helping out there with the damage slowly going up. I wasn't slowly going up, I was insanely fast. Yeah. Just like that, armor truck is gone. Ooh. Thanks to 46 FPS. And this is not fast, but I need the coins. Like, typically you do it when the armor truck is destroyed, so this is not fast at all, and would not recommend if the armor truck is destroyed. At this point, I probably would have just said point grinding and I've been trying to get these wasps. Yeah. Plus, I have the box at Dirt Jump. So that's gonna help. And apparently I have this new sand I, I didn't get. Ah, yes, for five coins, it's gonna save your run. It's gonna help. Trust me, I'm gonna have exactly 600 coins for Globix. Watch this, I'm gonna make it happen. I am not confident, but maybe. If you have 600 coins for Globix, I will donate $10. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna have to do something. Um, let's do it this way. This way is safe. Just driving through the car wash to escape. Wiggum gets lost very easily. Doesn't understand. That car wash, the AIs just don't understand when you go through. It's quite funny. Yeah, because I don't think it's programmed in their, uh, their stuff to uh, follow. Will you be going for low FPS, uh, curator here? Oh, almost got a uh, fast curator there. Hopefully there won't be a parked car. Oh, 
That was bad RNG. So this run is done with his hands, uh, but he's wearing socks on his hands. See, most normal people just put on gloves, but you know, Crazy Tone Dog is not a normal man. You are, you are a world record holder in uh, the Simpsons game. Yes. Let's go. But it's also very like it's the best cutscene. Yeah, they losing missed the great lines such as "I like it." But losing two minutes and twenty seconds is pretty bad. Missing that would be bad. Is, yeah. But, um, so we we missed an important part of the law there. So what it is. What it is describing is the fact that like aliens have put uh, things in the cola and they are filming a reality TV show and the ratings uh, used to be high but now they've gone down a bit. All the star things used to be number one. Space viewers couldn't get enough of these humans and their Goofy or silly behavior. I'm gonna go for this loss. I'm gonna miss. I went way to the right. There you go, second try. I just need eight more points, including. So there is a crusty glass that's worth five off to the right around this corner and then three more trees or anything. So that's one, two, three. Then the crusty glass. Six hundred coins. For the globex. Now the only th the only thing left to buy in the run is the zombie card, which is worth 500 to complete all story missions. So from now until 7-2, which is 7 missions away, we are currently on 6-2, also known as being down with the clown. We need to gather 500 coins, which there's a massive coin room to the left there in Krusty Blue. There's also coins on the boat that I most likely won't get, but still an option. And plenty of other coins, like a wasp in the way of driving the duff truck, getting the laser gun, and such as that. This was not fast. But oh well. Wow, the music really started popping off for this one. Definitely. It's going off. Yeah, the music really ramps up the uh, sad emissions of the game. I hit Krusty very far off to the middle of the road here. I thought there was a possibility 
Professor Frank was gonna run over Krusty the Clown. What's Krusty the Clown? That would have been, been pretty funny. Yeah. Krusty flew pretty far there. Yeah. Here. I think we're, what, 20 minutes away from the end now, probably? Yeah. I mean, Maybe yeah. 22, with how long it's gonna take to, um, do Homer 2. It might take longer with the socks on the hands. Sure, yeah. This is one of the last quote-unquote boring missions of the game, though. This one really is just, you follow Frank round and round and round and round and round. Yeah. Where will he go? I don't know. Nobody knows. I've played this video game before, so I know where Frank goes. Wait, you do? Yeah, I do. Why, why did nobody? Why did nobody tell me? Um. I uh, thought it was random every time. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I don't even think you have to go up there to that loop. If you just tuck yourself in that corner behind me, you should be safe. It should be still in range. Do you see how we nearly got stuck then? Can he actually just get permanently stuck there? Like, oh. stop what the game? So, he can get stuck there for maybe 20, 25 seconds, and then the game will automatically respawn him to the road. But that does absolutely suck if it were to happen. There are some points where the AI can get uh, soft off in the game, usually when they miss a trigger. Um, and all they go into a place they're not meant to, like. Most of the time, you can get away with just pushing the AI from behind into the wall. Then it will automatically reset the car to the nearest uh, road node. Because, um, as Tondog mentioned earlier, like he would reset his car. And in normal missions, um, the way the game is programmed is if you press the reset car button, uh, it will just take you to the nearest road node. Um, in street races, it's different, but we don't have to worry about that. Oops. And every time you restart a mission, it resets the car's health. So even though I ended that message, that mission with my car like almost one hit, restarting the mission here just automatically brings the car health back to um, zero percent. Which we do restart the mission quite often in the run. Yeah, there's a few missions where we where it's faster to restart the mission. Uh, not getting the fast stuff truck strat. Nah. Ooh, just no getting, way. Oh, this is gonna be rough. In, yeah, getting caught in two mines there about whether or not to pick up a drop or. I go for the backup really cost you there. Yeah, this is a really rough mission. See, this looks quite like my PB. <laughs> Unfortunate. Oh shoot! Respawn strats! Okay! That came out of nowhere. That was not my intention. Oh, no, 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 of course it was your intention. You were 100% meant to do that. Yeah, just like I'm 100% meant to get bold up like this. Oh, how did I miss it? That's so disappointing. That was pretty close, I think. Not even boat jump. Ramp jump to the boat. Uh-oh. Probably should not have gone for that, but too late. That is what we in the game call unfortunate. That is unfortunate. And my car is blown up. I'm gonna go down and collect these coins and get this yeah. lost. Coins are becoming an, uh, a minor issue. Like if if uh, this was a PB pace run, this would be like a big issue at yep. this point. But because it's uh, just, we've got to run within a few minutes of uh, 
PB, it's not really that much of an issue, but if this was like close to PB in, uh, you would be crying right now with these coins. Yes. Absolutely crying. Oh, that was so close. I did too much trolling. Look at that. Look at that. Covering coins easy. The saves. Ooh. The saves. Ooh. That was awesome. And now we're on to set to kill. I think casually, like a lot of people in chat were saying earlier that they, uh, it just came a lot casually. I think this is a mission where a lot of people just gave up when they were. Um, when they were doing runs uh, or just casually playing through the game. This mission was one of the sticking points. Can be pretty hard, but once you learn the speedrun route, which Tone Dog is not going for and gets busted. I went through the railing, let's go, 46 FPS for the win. For the win or for the love of gaming? For the love of gaming. Oh no! How much, does, it, does it cost you time to get busted? Like that much time or is it yeah. the time something you abuse? Uh, so it, so it freezes your car, it like doesn't let you drive or anything, and then it respawns your car, which takes like a second. So probably like anywhere from three to um uh, uh -oh. this is fine. I had a late I picked up that last stand late, so I have fifty seconds, so I can drive around safely. So to answer your question, there is a, a glitch of some sort that you can use in this game with uh, police getting busted called uh, walking through walls, which is which comes in and out of fashion in 100% from time to time uh, because basically it just means when you're coin grinding you can walk through the wall of Crustulum and not have to like go around and whatever. And, Sometimes to be faster, sometimes it's not, but in general, getting busted is like detrimental because you lose 50 coins and you don't really ever gain an advantage from it. Yeah, these coins are very rough. These coins are very rough. I forgot to go for the vend, and I probably should. Oops! <laughs> Silly mistake. Oops. This isn't great. So guys, I'm just gonna shout out, uh, Detox has donated $20 and has said that CTD is a legend. Thank you, thank you so much for the $20. We really appreciate that here. Guys, we're raising money for a wonderful cause, so really do appreciate every donation, little and big. But Detox, thank you, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Yeah, shout out to Detox. Runner of this game. We do love Detox. Uh, he is a... Uh... Valued member of the community, always supporting uh, every runner. He's quite, quite good like that. And final cutscene skipped.
Zero miss cutscenes. Ah, uh, no, no five dollars added to my donation. Nope. But I don't lose time. That is, that is true, yeah. So I need to think about what coins I'm gonna get. Probably Wiggums. Or can I get the Vend and be fine? Uh, you should be able to get a Vend and hit a lot of things and you should yeah. be fine. So I'll be doing that. The vet, the gas station vent to the left here. That was a very good angle. Just too much speed. Oh, you see that bridge? Uh, later on, we'll be doing a magic trick. Yep. In the One. next mission, we will be attempting a magic trick. Yep. I give it a 50-50 if I get it or not. No. You know, uh, we do really like magic tricks. This is the Halloween level. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. 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 Yeah, we're gonna be good. After getting this crusty glass, which is five coins, I just need three more coins. Hand run does not matter because the mission completes once they reach the Simpsons house. And as soon as yeah, mission complete comes up, you cannot get busted. And oh, I have seen people get busted whilst trying to speak to a zombie guy, and it is really funny. Yeah, because that's the... this is the last thing you need to purchase in ASM. The zombie car for 500 coins. Used to hopes and start this mission. Shatter. Also, the close call ones are very entertaining to watch. Especially those that end up being a PB. Doesn't happen too often. I couldn't name one off the top of my head at all. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing this mission is driving very far ahead to prepare a magic trick. For FTLG I Marathon watchers around the world. I think one of my favorite like moments watching somebody PB, I believe it was Bamford was uh, going for a PB and then uh, everyone just gets quiet in this mission. And then uh, JPEG, uh, never runner, just casually starts eating potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> and all you hear in the silence is just the crunch, the crunch. And here's the magic Let's trick. Go. Where oh, am I? I'm under the map. I'm out of bounds. On thin air. What's going on? What's going on? How did you do that? This is the Halloween level. Makes it honestly makes sense that this is the level that gets messed up with out of bounds shenanigans. Speaking of the Halloween level, it's October. Uh. I forgot what my respawn key was. My respawn car key was, because I changed it. And I'm just gonna play it safe and drive to the road. I definitely did not have to do that, but we like playing it safe. So what that does is getting that getting that out of bounds at that bridge there during the mission before keeps us un unloaded and makes it very much easier to get you just get out of bounds automatically when you start as it stays. And you're just able to drive to the school, which is across the map, saving so much time. Oh wow, I missed the oh, kick. That's suck. rare. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, when Frank says suck, that's when you kick, but I think I messed up the timing. I think I did it a little bit too early. So the reason why I activated the race there was to, um, the reason I activated the race there was to get my car back because I just blew up the other car I was driving last mission in laser beam. And not warping to the next mission because if I warp, everything respawns back in. So keeping everything out of bounds, making sure I don't fall out of bounds, getting back into my car, and back to the power plant we go, voiding the giant 
path that you n normally would take. But since I got two missions ago, I, I went out the bridge, the power plant is still um, unloaded, so I'm gonna have to go back to about here, drive into the wall, I could have done that a little better, to spawn in the power plant, because during this mission I have to climb up to the top of the power plant. And what I'm doing here is parking my car, so hopefully I'll be able to get into it during next mission and just drive back to the school like I just previously did. Ideally, I don't fall here, climbing up this wreckage to get to the top of the power plant. Beautifully done. I think I fell off my first time. Doing I think this. everyone's fallen off uh, the wreckage so many times. Yep. Now we're gonna look for a skeleton car. There one is. Will it be Bob or Greg? We're gonna find out. Bob is bad, Greg is good, so... In a second, we'll be waiting for them, and we, we basically dictate for one it's a Bob or a Greg. And we're through the wall, which, me personally, I have had runs die just plummet because I was unable to get back into the car, including my first actual sub-130 pace run into Homer 2. I'll just drive to it. This is fine. This is good. I'll absolutely take that. Let's go. So now we have, what? Two more missions? Two more missions left. So that was Alien Auto... Auto Topsy Part 1. This is Part 2. With using Snake and his car, the Bandit. Sweet acceleration. And now we're about to do... A um... <laughs> ignore what I just did. I de most definitely did not do the thing that you do during the next mission. And try activating a race that does not exist during part 2 and part 3. Just playing it extra safe. Activate the alien car, then to escape it. Dang, I didn't escape it there. Should be fine after the year. Yeah, absolutely. And we're gonna go for the no stop bridge clip. Didn't get it. Oh, hands. Oh. Oops. That's fine. And we get bridge clip first try. Well, first time lining up, and that was barely a lineup. We just love 46 FPS. So, on higher FPS, you can't uh, go to a bridge like that, and when I say higher FPS, anything above like 80 FPS kind of messes it up. You can consistently get bridge clip on like 60. Woo! Super speedy! We love super speedy. It's super fast. So what I did there was like unbalance my car from a different height, and for some reason it gives you unlimited speed. So I was able to get to the school very extremely fast. And what I did last mission was I drove back here to activate the race, which is for this mission. Just a silly mistake. I could have just drove to the alien car. Just a little goofy mistake I performed. Final time driving to the power plant and just absolutely skipping it out of bounds. Respawn car here to activate the checkpoint. Grab the waist. Only thing we have to do now is get to the school, but on the way to the school we have to pass by the Simpsons house, and you'll see what's going to be there. Oh, it's going to be a surprise. Most definitely not seen at all in the last couple missions.
Yeah, we are coming up to the end of the uh, level. Uh, the end of the game, actually. It's time of here is a bit deceptive because although it says to go to a school playground, uh, you only go to the Simpsons house before you get a new timer. Look, another alien cart. In this level, who would have thought? Oh, fun fact, the alien car uh, cannot go in the beam. So oh, during our randomizer tournament, uh, we had somebody get the uh, black greeny um, as one of our cars and tried to go into the beam, but it has no ability to do that. And we are about to hit time. As soon as he goes up the beam and the mission complete fades, it is time. Hi. GG. GG. And the reason why the alien car can't go into the beam is because at the start of 7-2, the alien car is just sitting in the beam. Yes. GG. GG's, guys. Well done. I think I was a couple yeah. of seconds late on the timer for time, so just, just be aware of that. And then the in-game time was a 139.50 without loads. Because the life split oh, doesn't nice. without. Yep. So another 139 with the socks on. Just 13 That's seconds up. behind my first trial run. GG. Um, you thank like you, thank you. Oops, sorry, Axe. Do you like the socks? We do love socks. Socks making us go fast. Guys, I want to say a huge thank you to Crazy, Sock Dog, and Axington um, for the wonderful run today, guys. Have you got any uh, final, final sign-offs? Um... Uh... <laughs> really, if you if you want to join the community, uh, go to the speedrun.com page, look for Simpsons Hit and Run, and then we have a Discord, we have all the guides there, and we can help you join our community, and yeah, if you want to do that, uh, I've been Axington123, this has been Crazy Tone Dog, and thank you for joining us, and... Good luck with the rest of the marathon. I uh, hope you raise all the money you're looking for and more because it's an amazing charity. Yep. Thank you, everyone who watched, and thank you for supporting. That was the Simpsons Hit Run All Story Missions with socks on my hands. No, thank you, guys. And thank you for the sock facts as well. Always always good to, to know uh, where we're going. And all, all know we're living in sock etiquette sin. So let's let's roll with that. We are, we are sinners. Um, coming up next, we got Nico Hart with Resident Evil 7 doing uh, New Game Plus Easy Any Percent on the steering wheel, guys. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm really excited for it, and we will be back shortly. <laughs>